So come with me, if you will, to, to, to Paris, circa 1952, uh, where we have this uh, seven-year-old girl. But instead of standing up as tall and proud as she is in her paper ballerina dress, with a twinkle in her eye and the smile on her face, I want you to imagine her lying on her stomach, um, having a total seven-year-old meltdown. Right? Because this is a story that my aunt loves to tell. My aunt was five years old at the time, and my mother here was seven years old. Now, she is totally losing it, according to my aunt. She is kicking and screaming. She is holding her breath and turning various shades of purple and red and blue. But what's interesting is that she's screaming at the top of her lungs, Je veux jouer du piano. Je veux jouer du piano. As loud as she can. I want to play piano. I want to play piano and will not listen to any reason. Now you have to understand that my aunt was standing with my grandparents, and my grandparents are Holocaust survivors. So seven years before this picture, they were living in the woods in Poland. They were hiding from Nazis. They were freezing half to death. They were starving half to death. And a week after the German surrender, my mother would be born in the Polish forest, because no one knew the Germans had surrendered yet. So they spend the next two years moving from displaced person camp to displaced person camp, finally arriving in Paris where my grandfather would take four jobs as a tailor and they would be able to afford nothing but a two-room hovel in a terrible neighborhood in the city. And here's my mother demanding piano lessons. And my grandfather tries to explain to her that there's no way they can afford it and she's not hearing any of it. She's screaming at the top of her lungs, je veux jouer du piano, over and over. Well, she started piano lessons about two weeks later with a very kind, very generous Holocaust survivor who lived down the street. When I asked my mother about this story decades later, she paused and she said, I, I didn't have the words for it, but I knew that music would be how I'd communicate with the world. That's what I want to talk about today, uh, the limitation of words. I want to talk about the power of music, and ultimately I want to discuss how these two concepts can help really us be our best as speakers and writers and as human beings. Now, my experience with music was, was very, very different. I grew up in a household, um, as was mentioned, with two professional musicians. My earliest memories were of sneaking down the stairs when I was like three and a half years old after bedtime. I was going backwards and hiding on the landing and peeking around the corner and watching my parents play music together. My father was in the Pittsburgh Symphony as a flute player for 45 years. And at this point, my mother was getting her master's in vocal performance uh, at Carnegie Mellon University. And she'd play piano and he'd play flute and I would watch them and it was this interaction like they were speaking with one, to one another without using any words. And this is what would happen in our family as I grow up. I would be watching them cook dinner together in the kitchen and a piece of Baroque music would come on and my mother would start to dance and my father would grab her and they'd dance around wordlessly and then they'd go back to chopping carrots and, 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 and other things, right? And I remember sitting at the dinner table and my father would be asking me about my day. So, so tell me about your math. Wait. He'd stop. We'd always have music in the background. He'd say, oh, listen to the clarinets. Listen to how they drive that melody. It's so beautiful. So tell me about math class today. Right? This is how we interacted. And finally, as I was skilled enough on the cello, every night we would play chamber music together. And I realized that the way that we really communicated most deeply our love to one another was when we were playing music together. Our hope was when we were playing music together that, that I find out years later that when we would really discover sorrow, it was through music. What I was realizing that it was that, like my mom did, that words were not enough for us to communicate, that while they created a world, they limited that world as well. 